In this video, I will be talking about the Browns' day three draft picks, so rounds four through seven. But first, I would like to touch on the Browns picking up left tackle Jed Will's fifth-year option for his rookie deal. So in that fifth year, which is in 2024, he's going to be making a little bit less than $15 million, and that is fully guaranteed. And that number puts him currently as the 15th highest paid left tackle in 2024. So if, you, if the logic figures that there are 32 starting left tackles and he's the 15th, that is pretty middle of the road money. And I do think that is a pretty fair assessment of his play thus far, pretty fair salary for him. And honestly, depending on if other left tackles get a, a higher paycheck in 2024, then that number could look even more reasonable uh, in, in more time. I do think I would put his play solidly in so far in his early career as solidly good. I, he had a very encouraging rookie year that looked like he might be a franchise guy. And I don't think he's quite lived, maybe quite lived up to that rookie season that he had a few years ago. And, you know, the Brown season went right and everything. I don't think he got, he's, he's gotten back to that level of play. But I don't think he's as terrible as some portions of this fan base will try to tell you. Uh, when you, he does have lapses in play, that's why that's why the front office hasn't given him, uh, you know, a big extension for a lot of money yet as of now. But I do I do feel like there there is some flashes of trucking along and him playing well. But there are flashes where you you do see why the front office would be hesitant to give him uh, a longer extension, which the front office has been willing to dole out multi year big money extensions to their offensive line. It's really the Andrew Barry and the and this front office regime has been, you know, they're very willing to extend guys like Wyatt Teller, Joel Batonio, Jack Conklin. And I, I do feel like this is a bit of a safer move, only picking up the fifth year option and not getting into Jed talks with Jed Wills as far as an extension after his rookie deal quite yet. They're kind of kicking that can down the road. They're going to see how this year works out. And again, that, that's why I place his is that's why I place his play in the good category where he hasn't been a complete train wreck. He hasn't, you know, tanked any of the Brown seasons because of his bad play or anything. But he, again, there was a level that he that he he set a bar for himself in his rookie season and he hasn't really been able to get back to that bar at least in my opinion, maybe the, maybe you guys in the comments have something else to say. Maybe the Browns are, are missing out on getting Jed Wills for long-term extensions while he's going to be as cheap as he can be. Let me know what you guys think about that. So we're going to be getting into the draft now, starting in the, the day three of the draft, I should say, starting in the fourth round. Their first pick in that round was Dewan Jones, offensive tackle from Ohio State. Uh, huge guy, listed at 6'8", 374 pounds. He did initially have maybe a... A ranking of a, of a late first rounder, early second round pick at one point during the Senior Bowl, where all the scouts were wowed by his uh, not not just his size, but what he was doing to other other guys at that Senior Bowl. However, there are some worth work ethic concerns that have kicked in. While he looked initially good at that Senior Bowl, he kind of shut it down after uh, getting that initial look at at the combine. He reportedly didn't really. He didn't really choose to do a lot of the stuff that was there, a lot of the activities. He turned down, I think it was the bench press and the, the cone drill, allegedly. So there were there are concerns about maybe a bit of a character issue, not necessarily what a distraction he's going to bring to you from what he does, but maybe some concerns about where his career is going to go by what he doesn't do. Although I, I don't feel like it's it's appropriate to completely wipe off his career at this point. There is a reason he fell to the fourth round. This kind of reminds me of last draft where the Browns drafted Perry on Winfrey who fell to the fourth round because of because of some potential maturity issues. But this is a different position. This is this is a different situation. We can't look at those two as the same. And honestly, uh, Dewan Jones is not going to be relied on to be a starter. He played right tackle at Ohio State, and Jack Conklin is very clearly the starter there, whereas Perry on Winfrey, I do think the front office did expect him to have a pop really early on. So hopefully with the offensive coaching staff with Bill Callahan, he's been able to work wonders uh, with guys who, who whose th their career maybe not are on the best path. We saw, we saw that with uh, Wyatt Teller getting out of Buffalo and Ethan Posick, they picked him up from Seattle. Hopefully, if if Dewan Jones, if, if you know, if Dewan Jones can can listen to what Bill Callahan has to say, maybe this turns his, his maybe this you know, his career had started. I'm not going to say that it's been going bad, but maybe this does kind of uh, get rid of the the perception that he currently has starting in the league that cost him uh, potentially from being a a late first, early second round pick to now getting uh, basically having a flyer put on you in the fourth round. Uh, the Browns also picked up Isaiah McGuire, defensive end out of Missouri. This is going to be another depth option as he's going to be stuck behind at least Miles Garrett and uh, and uh, Og Ogbo that they picked up in free agency. Although young players Alex Wright and Isaiah Thomas did show flashes of potential, so they could also be 
obstacles to him on the depth chart. But th those two aren't exactly like established NFL playmakers. So if he can turn some heads in camp, there could definitely be a spot for him on the 53-man roster. And he could definitely get some snaps in that defensive rotation if, if he is head, you know, head and tails above th those two guys that I just mentioned. Moving on to the fifth round, the Browns picking up a quarterback in Dorian Thompson-Robinson out of UCLA. In an ideal season, he's probably not going to see the field this year as they, the Browns have their starting quarterback in Deshaun Watson all locked up. So if he uh, is healthy throughout the entire season, Dorian Thomas, he's just going to be on the bench. Watson, they also have Josh Dobbs. They're probably ahead of him by default on this roster. But the Cleveland Browns did carry three quarterbacks on their 53-man roster all of last season with Watson, Brissett, and Kellen Mond as well. So if DTR can beat out Kellen Mond in training camp, there is a, a decent enough chance that he does stick around on that 53-man roster. And maybe if not, maybe he just gets, gets put in the practice squad. Who knows? Uh, also in the fifth round, the Browns picking up Cameron Mitchell, cornerback out of Northwestern. Uh, the last cornerback that this front office regime drafted out of Northwestern worked out pretty well in Greg Newsom. I think they were teammates, and Greg Newsom was talking to the media about how they were they're a little bit friends. So hopefully that relationship can kind of uh, help both of them play. He is joining a pretty crowded room in that secondary at cornerback with the aforementioned Greg Newsom, Denzel Ward, Martin Emerson had a tremendous year last season as a rookie, and AJ Green has come along very well, pretty much as well. So he's going to be. Uh, shoved down on the depth chart to start out with but that cornerback is a position position that you want a healthy stock of you don't want to uh, run dry of cornerbacks in case of injury or something like that so this is a, another example of the Browns trying to shore up their depth even at a position of strength now you move on to the sixth round they had one pick in that round they drafted uh, Luke Whipler it could be Wipler there's a there's a W-Y in there so however that's supposed to be pronounced he is a center from Ohio State so two Ohio State offensive linemen in this draft class for the Browns uh, this is another guy that probably won't see the field this year he's go he's the third string center from the get-go starting behind uh, Nick Harris Nick Harris excuse me Nick Harris and Ethan Posick sound like Daffy Duck on that one uh you know, again, if, if he sees the field in regular season action, that probably means that there's been some kind of injury emergency. And center, I guess that's a position where if you think you have a, a, a good player that you can develop over a couple of years, you might as well take him in the sixth round. And for the seventh round, they traded their pick to Baltimore for a sixth round pick in 2024 in next year's draft. So that's the entire Browns draft class. I do feel like day three was a lot of the Browns shoring up some of their depth. I don't feel like any of the picks on day three are going to be relied on to try to be an impact for the Browns. That's as a competitive team, that's probably what it should be. Whereas some of the round three picks that the Browns had with with uh, Tillman and Ika, I do think that those guys might be have a little bit more expectation to try to make an impact on their NHL roster during the regular season. But for all of these day three picks, I do it does feel like they're trying to shore up their depth just in case for injury or maybe one of them sticks out in camp and they can they can they can get some more snaps than expected but it, the, as far as the overall draft goes I do like the guys the Browns took although it is it is a bit hard to really find true dynamic playmakers when you don't have a pick in the first two rounds so hopefully the Browns won't have to be doing too much reliance on their on the on this draft class and the rookie class coming in but we'll see how it goes throughout the season thank you all so much for watching this video if you did indeed make it this far I will see you at the next one